What up guys, Raptac here. Welcome to the weapon guide series where we go in depth with the stats as well as some of the best attachments and mod combinations for every single weapon for both PvP and PvE in Shatterline. So make sure to sub if you want to learn about the inner details of this game's armory. Now today, we're going to be talking about the tier 1 assault rifle, the XM27 Pacifier. Now let's look at this weapon's base stats. To start things off, let's look at this weapon's rate of fire, which for this weapon we've got 662 rounds per minute, which is actually pretty good. The average for the assault rifle being 597 rounds per minute, this actually ranks the tier 1 AR as rank 2 out of 5 in rate of fire compared to the other assault rifles. And as far as damage goes, we're going to be looking at 4 different range scenarios ranging from 5 meters to 50 meters. First up, we've got close quarters combat at a 5 meter range. This weapon takes 4 shots to the torso to kill a target, giving it a TTK of 272 milliseconds, which is very good, and once again, it ranks it 2 out of 5. And as for headshots, I must warn you, this weapon is quite disappointing. You're looking at a very small damage increase from body shots to headshots. For a 5 meter range, you're looking at a 3 shots to the head to kill a target giving it a TTK of 181 milliseconds, which is the second worst out of all the assault rifles. Next up, we've got short to mid range of 20 meters, which for this weapon, it is mostly identical to the 5 meter range. We've got the same amount of bullets to kill, same TTK, and ranks the same out of the ARs. However, we see a decline in headshots. Like I said, it is a very disappointing headshot weapon. Now, it takes 4 shots to the head to kill at this range, which is the exact same as the body shots. So really, there is no reason to try to aim for the head here, making it the worst headshot assault rifle at this range. For the mid to long range of 35 meters, we need 5 shots to the torso for a kill, bringing the TTK up to 362 milliseconds, which is still not bad and still ranking second place in the AR category. As for headshots, we're also up to 5 shots to the head to kill, once again proving that headshotting with this weapon is outright unnecessary, once again ranking last. And as for the long range of 50 meters, we're up yet another shot to kill. Now we're at 6 shots to the body to kill, bringing the TTK up to 453 milliseconds, dropping it down a rank in the assault rifle category. And as for headshots, we stay at 5 shots to the head to kill, but I still wouldn't recommend going for it, but if you get a shot here or there in the head at this range, then it might save you a bullet. Up next, let's look at the initial hip fire spread of this weapon. And as you can see here, compared to the other assault rifles, the XM27 Pacifier actually has the worst initial hipfire spread out of all of them, which is disappointing for anybody out there who might be interested in a hipfire build. And now, let's look at recoil. As for recoil, this gun is actually super simple and easy to control. As you can see here, it's very linear and it just goes up a little and to the right making it actually really easy to control. To counter it, as you spray, you pull your mouse slightly down and to the left, and you'll very easily control the recoil for this gun. Now, as for handling of this weapon, starting off for the aim down sight time, we're looking at 217 milliseconds, which is not terrible. It is below average, but it is only below average because there is one weapon in the assault rifle category that aims down extremely quickly, which skews the average. But actually, it has the same ADS time as two other assault rifles. Now with reloading, we're looking at a reload time of 2.8 seconds, which is the second slowest in this category. And as far as sprint to fire goes, I'm not yet exactly sure whether this applies to every single weapon in the game, but it has a 150 millisecond sprint to fire, which is exactly the same for every single assault rifle in the game. And since we're on the subject of having the same exact stat, I should also mention that this weapon has a base move speed of 6.6 .6 meters per second while using a regular speed operator like Malva, an ADS move speed of 2.2 meters per second, which is the exact same for every single assault rifle in the game possibly every weapon, but I'll confirm this the next episode. Finally, for base stats, we've got our magazine capacity, which is 30 shots, 31 if you count the bullet in the chamber. 
which is the same as the Zenith and the Legatus, but it is less ammo than the Pylum, but more than the Conciliator. Now finally, let's move on to my personal favorite go-to builds for both PvP and PvE. Now starting off with my PvE build, I'm using the PS Falcon Sight, mostly due to its increased effective range. And since you actually fight very often at long ranges in PvE, I found this to be the most appropriate sight. The other two sites offer more or less close quarter combat bonuses and also the PS Falcon site will increase your weapon stability by 5% which is never a bad thing. For the second attachment I'm using the extended magazine. This one is a no brainer. It offers almost twice as many bullets making it much easier to deal with big waves or elite monsters such as the adamant or simply dealing more consistent damages to bosses. The downsides of it are not too bad for PvE. The slow reload can be annoying while fighting bosses, but while fighting smaller guys, it's not an issue because you can just swap to your sidearm if you actually run out of bullets and can't afford to reload. And the decrease in ADS time is irrelevant in PvE since you don't actually need a super fast ADS time when playing PvE. And lastly, we've got the selenium ammo, which increases damage to crystalline. After doing some small testing, it seems to increase damage by roughly 10 to 15%, which is not insane. But hey, a flat 10 to 15% damage buff is never a bad choice. And as for my PvP build, I use a speed PvP build. I generally like to use attachments that make me overall faster and this build definitely reflects that notion. Starting off I use the AFS Lex Sight, mostly because I love the crosshair, I'll be honest with you, I absolutely love this crosshair. But the extra ADS move speed is also decent when trying to keep up with fast speeds like the SMGs out there. Next. I use the fast reload magazine. A 15% reload speed is quite decent. Once again, it keeps me on the move and makes reloading less of a burden. And lastly, I use the Grab 505, mostly for its 20% ADS time decrease, which allows me to react much faster when in close quarters combat. However, the other grip that increases the weapon stability is not a bad choice, and I'll sometimes change to it. But as I'm getting used to this weapon's recoil more and more, I have been using this grip less and less. Oh, and I forgot to mention, in both of the builds, I do of course use the modification Neon that increases the accuracy and makes this weapon much better. And that wraps it up for today. Let me know what you guys think about this weapon and what your favorite builds for it are in the comment section below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, give your boy a sub. I'm always trying to improve my videos and I would love to hear feedback from you guys. So that's it. Peace out, guys.